Hey everyone, it's Helmnex here, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create a Minecraft server for completely free that works for both T-Launcher and the official version of Minecraft. This method will also not use Eternos, Minehut, or any other third-party websites to start up the server. It will actually be using an official method and will be much more reliable than other methods. So with that said, let's get right into this video. So the first step is to download the Java SE Development Kit 16. And the reason why we're doing this is that Minecraft needs this for the server to operate. If you don't install this, uh, 1.17 servers and pretty much anything beyond that will not work. Like the screenshot, I will show up right now. So head over to this Oracle website. I'll drop all the links down in the description below that I mentioned in this video, including this one. And you want to scroll down to the end of the page and go under Windows X64 installer and then click on this download button right here. And then click on open and it's going to start downloading the file. Now once you have finished downloading it, what you want to do is go ahead and as you can see it already shows that I've installed it so it's going to ask me to reinstall it. But for you, if you never installed this before, it's going to show installation screen and ask you to install the thing. And then click on next several times and it should install the thing very easily. But I'm going to click on no and once you're done installing, it's time to move on to the next step. The next step is to download the jar file from the official Minecraft website. This link will be put down in the description below. Click on this to download it and then click on save as and make sure to save it on your desktop. Now it's going to start downloading. Now, as you can see, once it has finished downloading, it's going to show this warning right here. And what you want to do is go on the three dots and click on keep. And there you go, now it's uh, successfully downloaded with no hassle. By the way, this file is actually completely safe to download and have on your computer because we are downloading it from the official Minecraft website, so there's nothing to worry about there. Now, once you're done downloading, head over to your desktop, and then you should see the server.jar file on your desktop. If you haven't already moved it to your desktop, do so right now. And what we're going to do is right click on your desktop, anywhere on your desktop, and then click new and create a new folder. And what we're going to do is call this folder server. And I'm going to uh, call this Houndex for the sake of this tutorial. And this is so that we can keep all our files organized because we're going to put all our files necessary to start up the server into this folder so we don't get lost or messed up. So what you want to do is drag that server.jar file into this folder. And then, now the next step is to create a new text document by right clicking and then click new and left click on text document. We're going to call this run server. And you can call this anything you want, actually, as long as you can remember what it's called. This will be the file that we're going to use to start up the server. Now, next, you want to go to the View tab and make sure that file name extensions is checked. And what you want to do is right click on this run server text file and you want to change the txt part of this file to .bat just like so. And if you've done it correctly, it will show this warning right here and click on yes. And next, you're going to want to right click on this and click on edit. And as you can see, it will show a notepad. And then you want to go back to the official Minecraft website and copy this command right here. Select that, right click and copy, go back to notepad and then right click and click paint. Instead of Minecraft server 1.17.1, we're going to change this to server.jar. And the reason why we're doing that is because the executable jar file right here is called server.jar. So we want this to match with this. And you can leave everything else as default and you can close out of the notepad. The next thing to do is to import your single player world into this folder so we can use it for the multiplayer server. Now, if you're planning to start a fresh world or if you're planning to speed run your friends, then you don't have to do this step and you can skip to the timestamp that'll show up right now. But this is how you would uh, import a single player world and transfer it to a multiplayer server that we're just about to create right now. To do that, we're going to go to the search bar and then type in percent app data percent, just like so and click on the file folder. Now go to .minecraft, go to saves, and then as you can see, these are the worlds that you have currently created in Minecraft. Now in the Minecraft game, I, as you can see, I only have two worlds currently created for a single player, and those names will correspond to the names of the folders right here. Now it doesn't matter if the world survival or creative, we'll be able to change that later on. What you wanna do is to copy the world that you wanna use for the server. I'm gonna use, uh, this one and then you want to go back to the other folder that you created which is this one and then go ahead and click paste and what you want to do is right click and click rename and change this folder to world just like so make sure it is all lowercase no capitals now once we're done with that we're going to go click on run server.bat 
as you can see it just closed out of command prompt suddenly and that's completely normal that's actually part of the process and it will create uh, several more files what you want to do is double click on the EULA text document now change false to true this is a very important step guys if you don't do this the server will not start properly the command prompt will shut down immediately if you try to open it make sure to save your changes and then close out of this text document and the next thing we're going to edit is the server.properties file what we want to do is scroll down to online mode and then change this to from true to false some people do have this issue when they use t-launcher and it shows that they're not authorized to enter the server and this is probably the reason why so by changing this to false, this should help fix the issue. There are also a bunch of other settings that you can play around with, such as max players. You can bump this number up if you want. If you want more players to join your server, you can also change the difficulty and the uh, the PvP if you want that to be turned off or on. Now, once you're done, you want to save your changes and then close out of the notepad. And we're basically set to start the server. Now you can double click on run server.bat to start your server. Now once you see done right here, your server has been successfully launched. Now to join your server, you would actually have to enter your IP address for your computer that's hosting the server. And if you would want your friends to join, you would have to give them your IP address. So to find out what your IP address is, you would have to go to command prompt. So go to the search bar and type in CMD just like so, and then click run as administrator because you need to run as administrator for this to work. And then type IP config just like so as I've shown right here, and then hit enter. Now we'll show a bunch of IP addresses right here, but what you want to look for is the wireless alien adapter Wi-Fi if you're using Wi-Fi and look for Ethernet if, if you're using Ethernet to connect to the internet. Look for IPv4 address and then right next to that you want to look for these numbers which is your IP address that you want to copy. Now select those numbers and use the shortcut command control plus C to copy that and then go back to Minecraft and then go to multiplayer right here and then go to direct connection paste in your IP address just like so and then click join server now if you've done everything correctly it should show up this and as you can see we're successfully in our Minecraft server now you may notice that when you're in the Minecraft server you can't use the commands so to enable them you would have to go back to command prompt and then what you want to do is type in OP and then the username of the player that you would allow to use uh, the commands or cheats in the game so that would be gamerhound since that is my username and hit enter and as you can see it made me a server operator when i go back to the game it will now allow me to change the game mode for example to creative and as you can see bam we're now in creative also i can change the sun i can also change the time to night just to show you guys another command and yeah, that's how you would give yourself access to use cheats in your server. However, to remove operator access from a player, all you have to do is type in D-E-O-P in the command prompt and then type in your username and then hit enter. And now, as you can see, I'm no longer server operator. And when I try to type in commands, it does not work. It will show you me the same error as before. Now to clarify, the server will last forever uh, until the command prompt shuts down. So you don't have to worry about the server automatically shutting down. You can even have zero players in it and it will still run. That's one thing to know about. So to stop the server, all you have to do is go back to command prompt. And then what you want to type in is uh, stop and then hit enter. And now it's going to stop the server. As you can see, the server is closed. And if you would like to restart the server again, well, all you have to do is to go in the folder that you just created and click on uh, run server. Double click on this batch file to run it. Now, another thing that you should know is that the server will save the changes that you have made to it. So if you're doing some speed running and if you don't finish and then you shut down the server, those changes will be saved. So you don't have to worry about losing your changes. So that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you found it helpful, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe to your channel if you're new or if you're feeling generous today. As always, I'll see you all in my next video.